Hi, this is Rich Harrington for PhotoFocus.com, and I'd like to give you a look at the On One Perfect Photo Suite workflow. Now, I've opened up an image here into On One, and while I'm happy with a lot of this image's details, I'd like to make it look a little bit better. One of the things I like about On One is how quick it is to zoom in with the navigator here. This makes it really easy to check critical details so you know right away that you've nailed this image. I've got focus, I've got what I want, but while the critical focus area works for me, the composition does not. So I'll click back to fit to see everything. You'll notice here that there is a crop tool. Shortcut is C. So one of the things I'm gonna do is choose that crop tool and then from the pop-up menu here, I've got a bunch of different aspect ratios I can choose from. I'm gonna go with a five by seven in this case, but click the switch button so it rotates it. And you'll notice how easy it makes it to compose that photo. You can grab the crop handle there and really nail that till you feel like you've got the composition. And once that's set, just click the apply button and the image will be cropped to the new composition. While I'm here in layers, one of my favorite tricks, particularly for an image that's a bit washed out like this one, it was a cold, dreary, cloudy, overcast, hazy winter day, and there just wasn't much there in that sky. I'm going to just stack this here by duplicating the layer, and you'll notice support for full blending modes, which is awesome, something I miss not having inside of Lightroom. I can now change modes, things like soft light, to start to stack that. And you'll note, you can even use the keyboard shortcut of Shift Plus to step through blending modes, similar to what you might do in Photoshop. Now, depending upon the mode that you use here, you'll get a very different look, but I'm a bit partial to overlay, soft light, and hard light, just to really pop things there. You'll note if I toggle that on and off, how easy that is to see. Why don't I just rename this here called Stacked Blend, so I know what that layer is doing, and all in all, that feels pretty good. If you wanna merge that, you can go ahead and merge those layers down, but I'll preserve the flexibility here in case I need to come back. Now, one of the things that's great is that this is a tabbed or modular workflow. So now it's very easy to move to the next tab, which is Enhance. You see that the image gets handed off, and I recommend zooming in to 100% so you can really see what you're doing. You'll note everything redraws, and now you can take advantage of standard types of adjustments. For example, I can pop the color a little bit. I can work on bringing out some of the details to really enhance some of the contrast on those edges there. And you can also add things like vignettes here, putting a little bit of darkening in on the edge and taking advantage of things like noise reduction, simple presets that you can work with here or tweak them as you see fit. Now, once that feels pretty good, I like to evaluate the image, viewing the entire image at once. And all in all, I'm pretty happy but there's a slight blemish here where a bit of an object in the water is coming through. So to get rid of that, I'm gonna take advantage of the retouch brush and just paint over slightly. And when I release, it blends and pulls that out. So very small little blemish there, but I'm happy to get rid of that. You'll note if there's other things, for example, this slightly green object here that I'm finding a little distracting, paint over it and when you release, heals it, takes it out. So it makes it very simple to go in and fix things like that. Once you're ready, you can head on to the next tab. Now, I'm not using portrait here, so I'm gonna jump right to effects. This makes it simple to start to enhance the image, and you'll notice that the layers all carry over. So right now, we've got the enhancement that occurred, and you see there that above it now, we have empty layers or effects that we can process. As I'm ready here, it's quite simple to start to enhance this. You'll notice all sorts of different options as well as presets. Presets make it easy to choose a particular look and you can roll over those and with one click apply and get that look, which tends to have multiple effects being stacked. This makes it really easy to really quickly create a film look. And while I'm happy with that overall, you'll note that each of these remains editable. So if you decide that as you're working with the tone, you really want to bring that out a bit more, you can come in and start to play with the detail slider and the clarity just on that tone layer, which is nice. Then when you're satisfied with the tone, 
you can go in and start to introduce a little bit of a color tint. And I like that, but I don't think it's doing what I need in this case. So I'm just going to delete that by clicking the minus and then plus to add an empty layer. You'll note now that you could take advantage of all of these individually on their own. And what I want to do is a little bit of an additional lens blur. So you'll see that you have the ability here to just choose from an individual preset or some of these have masks applied. So for example, if I click, you'll note that not only does it apply the lens blur, but it creates a mask and that mask can be manipulated. So for example, maybe I want to make this a little skinnier and place it over the object and adjust the height there. Let's pull that out just slightly. And on the side here, it's easy to rotate. So now I could place my subject in the middle of that blur. This just is great controls because I like the ability to really get in there and refine that. And you see there, very interactive, easy to use controls right on the canvas. And let's just finish that out. I'll take a look at the color enhancer effect, select it so it's active and turn on its visibility. All in all, that's feeling very solid. And remember, it's simple to continue to add more effects. One of my favorites actually is to come on over to the filters here and take a look at some of the black and white adjustments. I like to apply a strong black and white adjustment above this. In this case, a nice deep black, but instead of leaving that in black and white mode, you'll note that you actually have full support here for blending modes. So we'll set that into a mode itself, like overlay, and it really becomes a nice enriching layer that just sort of mixes the black and white image with the color. All right, that's feeling really good there. And when I'm satisfied, I can click apply to commit the whole thing. Now, one of the best things about this is once it is applied, you'll note that everything is still stacked in there. So if I want to go back and work with those individual layers, I can do so. If I decide that one's just a little too strong, we can blend that back and continue to enhance this overall image until we're satisfied. Once all done, just click the save button and it's very easy to store this in a native file like a PSD document that can be handed off to other tools such as those from Adobe. For photofocus.com, my name is Rich Harrington. This is my workflow to take an image from looking kind of good, but just not quite there to something that's truly enhanced and pops the emotion of the feeling that I was going for on this cold winter day.